Welcome to Business Coaching Secrets with Carl Bryan. If you want to attract new high-end coaching clients, fill live events, and build a wildly profitable coaching practice where business owners pay, stay, and refer, you've come to the right place. In this podcast, Carl provides his keys to the kingdom for finding and signing high-paying clients and building the coaching business of your dreams. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, coaches around the world, welcome to another episode of Business Coaching Secrets. It's your boy, the road dog, with none other than the man, the myth, the business coaching legend, Carl Bryan. Shoots. Well, Shoots. There you go. Damn, that's. Uh, I was waiting for something other than that. How you doing, Road Dog? Good to have you here, Shoots. <laughs> See, this is how I keep you on your toes, right? Yeah, like it's not it's not always slam Carl Bryan day, but yet it is. Uh, don't worry. What I didn't do in the opening, I will do at some point throughout the podcast. So you'll be we, on your we toes. We all believe you. We all believe you. There you go. There you go. Hey, listen, before, um, before we dive into a bunch of new questions, um, and I want to get right at this because like last week we, we finished off on the podcast talking about this this addiction of comparison do you remember do you remember talking about that yeah yeah love it so yeah. like I, I just wanted to sort of because i have a bit of an open loop there and i kind of wanted to close that out if you don't mind and because i was like i'm sitting here kind of going like i'm curious how coaches could use that 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 addiction of comparison um to their advantage because i know that there's obviously some negative um you know connotations to um comparison Yep. But I'm just wondering, is there is there any way that coaches could use that to their advantage? Yeah, um, nice. Um, and by the way, comparison, not to be mistaken for judgment, ladies and gentlemen. That's an important distinction, I think. Um, so maybe what I'll do. So last episode, we were talking about the X factor. Like any audience you get in front of, I get in front of, Road Dog gets in front of, Tony Robin gets in front of. The prospects are pegging you on a list relative to your industry, right? So regardless of how far you climb or good you get, um, they're comparing you, right? And and you're comparing others, by the way. You know, it's LeBron, it's Jordan, it's Elon Musk, it's Jeff Bezos, it's Tony Robbins, it's Jay Abraham, Tim Ferriss, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary Vee. Um, we all get it and so will you, right? So addiction of comparison. So you you could fight it or you could profit from it or you could acknowledge it or you could stay in denial of, you know, kind of universal principles like this, right? So, so good thought. Think about um, how could you do it? Like think about making something official and then using it, right? Like I'm um, just a little bit ago, I was watching the, uh, the ESPYs. So the ESPYs, like the Grammys, but for sports, how did no one think of this, by the way, like the MTV awards are like what the Grammys are for music, the MTV awards are for music, but like they're the Grammys are really official and stuffy and the MTV awards are like super fun and lighthearted, right? Like remember when Madonna kissed Britney comes to mind? That would that would never happen at the Grammys, right? Like if Will Smith punched Chris Rock at the MTVs, might have actually become part of the show. Actually, probably not because that was unacceptable, but no doubt you get the idea and the spirit of it it, it. it wouldn't have made sense, but hopefully you get what I'm doing, right? Um, like, and then how about the Academy Awards? You ever notice how many people win the Academy, but the box office total say something, you know, horrifically and totally different? Um, how would you feel if you starred in a movie and like you 10x, 50x, 100x the other one, like the competition, um, and then they won the Oscar for best film? Like it, it would have to be seen as a bit of a joke, right? But in 10 years, right, it's one is an Academy Award winner. And the other is not right. Martin Scorsese, I love the guy. Created Goodfellas, Color of Money, uh, Casino, Cape Fear, Aviate, Wolf of Wall Street. Um, but he didn't win an Oscar, right? He finally did for Departed, but like, kind of. I think I don't. I'm not sure what you think of those movies, but those are some beauties in my opinion. Like it, it's it's ridiculous, and the industry knows it. But clearly, he's not in the old boys club, right? They they created an organizing body with all the biases deeming something worthy. Um, not you and I, as in the marketplace, it's what, you know, 
their their stuffy you know rules regs and and guidelines right like people love and are drawn to ranking so so think of creating a list uh, evan carmichael he's a guy I interviewed uh early on in the podcast and like he has a thing like where he he ranks say the top realtors in canada top realtors in america top realtors in australia top mortgage brokers in california top influencers in say digital marketing and then he uses that to drive traffic and then hubspot does the same i know there was a list you know the best business coaches in the world and they rank me sixth um, or maybe it's the best and then it was the best business coaches to follow and then they rank me um you know it's it's the like it's so powerful to be able to like then all of a sudden i'm like i have people tagging me on facebook and saying hey you are ranked on this list and then just imagine how that's all of a sudden getting you know them mileage and by the way and suddenly i'm a fan right like i'm you know i'm looking at the hubspot rankings <clears throat> so actually there's another example back in the day in the oil and gas industry where i grew up it's a little bit like um, what Houston is to oil and gas, you know, it's kind of similar. And they literally created these, they they basically sold awards for the oil and gas industry, right? So that you, the more you paid, basically the higher you ranked, which is kind of laughable, but like nobody really looked into it. I don't know that anybody really cared, but like, you know, when you were able to say that you were ranked number one for XYZ in the entire oil and gas industry, right? So for performance, for safety, for customer service, whatever, Imagine the power that's got on your marketing material, right? Similar, Volvo's the safest car. Or you see a BMW drive by, I bet you look at the back and I do, Road Dog does, others do. You're looking for three, five, seven series, right? And then you effectively rank the individual, you rank the car fundamentally on how much it costs because clearly a seven series BMW is significantly more expensive than three series, right? So more to the point, Road Dog, like the question and where... I kind of want to go with this is what if you created the local business awards, right? Like the highest quality product, um, the highest performing customer service, uh, fastest growing local companies where they got the Inc. Inc. 500 fastest growing companies. And then they got the Inc. 500 um, highest performing companies, right? Uh, maybe you could have uh, the best companies owned by owners under the age of 40, or maybe it could be the highest performing owners over the age of 60. Um, maybe it's the highest performing in urban areas or highest performing in rural areas, right? Like the, you know, country and city type businesses. Um, and then, so as I, I don't know, cause you, you know, the, I'm trying to think like the top 40 under 40, right? So like, if you think about, like, you'll think about this and then you think, yeah, but this has already been done, right? You got to stop it. Think of the seven steps that Road Dog and I went over on the last podcast, right? And the requirements that I gave you to basically, um, you know, level up. And then also think how you could make it fun if you were to undertake this and do it. Like, how could you make it fun? Like, instead of just, you know, making the stuffy Academy Award version of awards, how could you make it like MTV and the ESPYs, right? And, and by the way, I don't need to look locally in your community, in your city, in your suburb to know that nobody's taking the time to create the equivalent of the MTV awards uh, locally, right? So like the fun, lighthearted local business awards, what, what might that mean? Or, and become the organizing body, right? Think, do you think if you did that, could you get a few extra folks on the phone, right? And I tell you, it'll get you on the phone, but the problem is it's going to take time. It's going to take money. It's going to take focus and it's going to take effort and far more time, focus and effort than money, but it's going to take all of those things, right? So, so nobody does it. People look, Rodo, we talked about this multiple times in the last few podcasts, but it's like people just aren't thinking big enough, right? Like the you're thinking about how am I going to get a coaching client and thinking about something like the MTV ESPYs of the local, you know, business awards, I think is just thinking at a significantly higher level. But like that would be an example, uh, you know, like instead of being compared, become the person comparing, you know, like be the person that creates the list. So I don't know, Road Dog. What do you think? That's what I'm. That's well, where I'd just just to, just to add to that, like it's it's not it's not just like good enough to get ranked, right? The, like you that you need to tell somebody. Would you not agree? Yeah. Look, good point. Like another problem. Like yeah, they're gonna they're gonna create the list or get ranked on the list, and are they gonna tell anyone? Do they have a plan to tell anyone? You know, is is anybody gonna find out? Do they do they have a platform? 
Um, and you know, like, do you, when I go to LinkedIn, how many people are following you? When I go to your Facebook account, how many people are following you? Do they have their own Facebook group, um, you know, with their ideal clients? Do they have a, you know, a media platform? And the answer is normally no. And it's not just to be known, Road Dog, super important. It's known by the right people. You could, you could have a list and only seven people know about it. Um, you know, that you are ranked number one on XYZ, but if they were the right seven people, as in seven joint venture partners, um, it could look seven joint venture partners could change anybody's business, assuming that the JV partner has got the ideal clients. So I'm hoping to, I guess, a business coach, I'm hoping you understand like the power um, of what we're talking about and how it aligns to the seven figures that we talked about in the last podcast, right? Like people don't hit seven figures because they're too busy earning seven figures. Like think about that. You're not hitting seven figures as in a million dollars with your coaching company because you're too damn busy earning six figures, right? They're too busy trying to find a coaching client as opposed to, you know, busy creating the prestigious local awards like we just talked about. And again, don't, you know, I'm not saying this to call you out saying this to call on you, you know, maybe there's just something bigger there. And in order to do so though, you need leverage, you need money, you need contacts, you need networks, you need events, you need influence. And importantly, you need more contacts, network events and influence than you need money. But let's not kid ourselves that, you know, in order to think this big, you're probably going to need to spend a few bucks just to kind of brace everybody. Right. But, but think about, like, okay, kind of goes back to what we talked about in the, um, you know, the, the seven figure kind of roadmap we went over. I think that's on the last podcast, maybe the last two, but they got to think about going into the business of branding you. Like, what would that look like? Like Tony Robbins is in the business of promoting and being Tony Robbins. Make no mistake about it. My mentor, he's one of the first uh, inventors in Salesforce. And I can tell you that Tony Robbins is a billionaire by virtue of his shares in Salesforce alone which by the way, we're gifted to him. Why? Because he's Tony Robbins, right? Elon Musk is in the business of being Elon Musk. Hulk Hogan back in the day was in the business of being Hulk Hogan. The Rock, he's in the business of being The Rock. Madonna was the same back in the day. Taylor Swift is the same today. Like when one guy gets paid $100,000 a year to coach and the other coach gets paid 12,000 to do fundamentally the same job or one actor gets 100 grand and then Tom Cruise gets... Lord knows, but you know, 10 million plus, plus, plus to star in the movie. It's not like a 9 million or a $900,000 of talent that separates them. Like McGregor and uh, is it Jake Paul? They get paid like, I don't even know what, but I'm going to say a hundred million bucks to fight Mayweather. And then they're not even boxers, right? Like this is insanity in that, right? But, but okay, you can look at it and say it's insane or you could look at it and go, how the hell did they do it? the addiction to comparison, the, um, well, it's really the leverage of celebrity is, is it the note. So rock is in the business of being the rock and that's why he gets overpaid at such a high level. So the big money flows to people with high levels of status, right? And as I say that I can picture somebody getting annoyed at a possibly a really high level, but I would just suggest you get a little bit, you know, you get over it. And, you know, jump right into the business of, you know, being you is that, you know, like you're just literally in the business of being you and you could. And of course, now I'm talking about the rock and Tom Cruise. There could be a disconnect there. You could totally do this on a smaller scale, like buy a billboard, like the local realtor. I don't need to go to your city and drive by like, you know, the popular hill or the popular highway where everybody drives by. And there is going to be realtor after realtor with a picture of them and their smiley, you know, picture promoting themselves, right? So, like, could you do the same thing the way the realtor does? And more importantly, do the the local live events and do lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of them. People love educators. Um, and, and just so become the educator, but become a really, really good one. And and by the way, Road Dog and I talk about this all the time. He literally opens up with explaining that, you know, our goal is to be a little bit on the entertaining side. We want to educate you, but we also want to entertain you, right? So when you do your local live event, when you're going to go into the business of promoting you, don't just be, um, you don't want to just educate them, but you want to find a way to entertain them right? Like I used to do uh, an event I guarantee to solve any marketing problem on the spot. And then a while ago, um, 
I don't know, I'm going to say it's two years ago, maybe 18 months ago, maybe two years ago, whatever it was, but I guaranteed to solve any business coaching problem on the spot. And truthfully, I pooped my pants a little bit when I saw some of the heavyweights that were registering and showing up, but the events went great. I released him as podcast. You could literally listen to him um, as part of the podcast. Um, I don't know when they were released, but well, you could search them easily, but right there. But again, it was like, you know, when you guarantee to solve any marketing problem on the spot, I don't know. That's a little bit of going into the business of, of being you, you know? Um, and by the way, none of this will happen for you overnight. Um, and it's probably going to be, you know, it's going to take longer than you think, but it's totally going to be worth it. And by the way, so this is you. So what about your clients? You got to help them do the same thing. Stop helping them just become the, like a, you know, a better landscaper, a better painter, a better accountant, a better electrician, help them become, of course, they have to be world-class at what they do, right? That's, that should be just a given. They've got a, there's a saying, you don't want to yell too loud until you want to be heard. But like once world-class and once they really feel comfortable and they've got the back end service, et cetera, um, you know, you want them to go into the business of becoming the marketer of their thing. Right. A, like a good metaphor for this maybe is your body. Right. I don't I don't care if you like nourishing foods, you like to drink water, you like to exercise. If you do or you don't, it delivers results in accordance to how you play the game of health, according to the universal principles, the universal rules. Right. So you're either healthy or unhealthy. You're either 30 pounds or 100 pounds overweight or you're you know, for your age and for your height and whatnot, you're, you're at the right weight. It, it's going to be dictate, dictated by how you play the health game. And that includes if you got a bad hip, if you got a bad knee, if you got a bad ankle, like, I don't know, you just got to push through. And if you allow that story to stop you um, from doing X, Y, Z, and I do understand that there are some legitimate, you know, sometimes folks just can't get past some of these legitimate um, health issues, but you just, you, you know, you, you got to find a way. You know, find an exercise machine that you can get on. But at the end of the day, being healthy is not about being positive about your health. It's about how you play the game, right? It comes back to like the movie, The Secret, right? Where, look, positive thoughts are better than negative thoughts, right? It's a 101. But both are trumped by a million miles by the person that takes action, right? And then storytelling like that should probably also be mentioned here. Like, how do you tell the story of you, right? Like the, if you look at the Tom Cruises and the hottest celebrities and the Madonnas and the Taylor Swifts and whoever else, they're incredible at answering questions about themselves and then delving into stories about, you know, the new movie they're starring in, or it's Taylor Swift writing about like, what, like, as I ask you a question, what does Taylor Swift write about in her, in her songs? And the answer is ex-boyfriends who also happen to be what? famous and then frankly she makes them famous if they weren't already but they you know almost always are so then she's also leveraging celebrity and taylor swift is taylor swift like that's part of her storytelling right and then you know also when you're telling the story making it funny making it dramatic making it educational uh, making it revealing like tony robbins tells the same stories over and over and over again right like you see that my question is, and as I say that, I'd be amazed if you don't go, oh, like either you knew that already or you're like, yeah, geez, he's right, right? Well, are you? And then give me your three primary stories that you come back to time and time again to basically trade off of lessons and educate the person that you're sitting there, right? Like I wrote a blog post, um, it was a while ago now, but you know, my first hockey fight, you know, like I was 16 playing against guys who were five years older and you know, five to 10 inches taller, unfortunately, but you know, you could, you could Google it, but like the, the fight ends with the guy who's significantly bigger than me tapping me on the head as if to say that that was never going to work out for you, little buddy, but uh, good on you for having a crack. And I, I hope the wounds heal, right? Like, so like, forget Leonardo, forget Elon Musk, forget the rock. What stories do you have to tell? Have you thought about them? Have you practiced them? Have you thought about how you could ramp up the conflict in the story? Remember, every episode of what's your favorite show? And you say to me, Friends, Seinfeld, Three's Company, Game of Thrones, Bachelor. Road Dog loves The Bachelor. And basically, batch, like, the conflict is the central theme for every single episode, right? You'd, like, literally every episode, conflict is the foundation of it. Like, so, um, Undercover Billionaire, you guys have watched that. I think it's a pretty cool little show. You might be able to learn something if you haven't watched it. But it's just a series of things going wrong. 
Um, if you watch The Profit with Marcus Lemonis, and again, if you don't, I think it might be a good idea for a business coach to do so. The entire, it's just everything's constantly going wrong and they're not going to be able to accomplish their goal. Like that, that's the foundation of the show, right? So what does that mean for you? What conflict come into your stories, right? Like get really good at talking about conflict and then overcoming it. And you might be thinking, yeah, but I don't have that story. No, you absolutely have that story. You just haven't taken the ABC and connected them, right? And and by the way, it's like, are you more committed to telling, like Tony Robbins is not shy to exaggerate the story or maybe change the story up a little bit to get his message across because what he's completely committed to is is transforming the person listening to basically go and live their best life and overcome, you know, have their breakthrough, overcome their, their fears, what have you. So like, and I'm not saying you, you know, mince, but like your story, you know what I mean? Like you could tell your story in such a way um, that it moves the other person like that. That's what you need to be doing. And again, conflict will be the central theme. I want you to be thinking about that. Right. And, and also maybe an importantly, like, like if you're not a badass, don't try and put yourself out there as one, or if you're not Mother Teresa, don't do that either. One of the things, if you're not authentic and genuine, um, you're going to get found out. But you you want to you know reveal who it is that you are, and then effectively amplify it through conflict and through storytelling. And Gary Vaynerchuk, he, he again does this really really well. Um, you know, he's on the rampage now for like just every big. He's he's just trying to be like the not trying. He just he's just you know promoting just a really positive message constantly. If you want an example, just go to his Instagram or his Facebook um, or whatever he, you know, his YouTube channel and just look at what he's posted today. And remember there will be multiple things today as you listen to it, regardless of what day that is, because he's always posting. Um, and it's just going to be really, a, you know, a message of positivity, of a message of positivity, right? But, but bottom line, look, make no mistake, the number one rule of becoming a seven figure operator as mindset. You need to feel super worthy of the accolades and the accomplish and you know accomplishments and you know the the comparison in your favor. So go into the business of promoting yourself. I had somebody, you know, hired in the early days that was pretty much tasked with talking about and promoting me as like a full time job. And then what were they promoting? I ran local live events multiple most people can't get one done in a month and i was doing multiple per day um and that I was just that was the job you know what i mean that was literally the you know the job description practically so are you worth but like road dog to your point you can't just get ranked and you can't just create the rankings you've got to go and feel comfortable um really putting yourself out there so you know and platform on instagram on facebook on youtube if you're a tiktok guy or gal do it on tiktok doesn't matter where you do it but do it you know consistently and in a way where you feel again you go into the business of promoting you and then start on a smaller scale and ramp it up and ramp it up and ramp it up and also be cautious you don't want to yell too loud until you want to be heard right so again just make sure that that you know refining that message and crafting that message and getting better at putting it out there um as you're moving along. So, so that's what I'd say shoots. What do you think? I I'm just laughing. First off. Yeah. The bachelor settled down. <laughs> I swear to God, that type of filth, that is brutal. Mm. But the, the dude tapping you on the top of the helmet, like you didn't feel like a big enough pigeon on the ice already. This dude's <laughs> tapping you on the top of the head. Like <laughs> that's right there. Well, that happened shoots. It was, it was oh, rather God. humiliating, but that's okay. I got over so it. So good. So good. It's like settle down, pigeon, settle down. <laughs> All right. Um, so I got a, a bit of changing gears here. Um, and this is actually going to lead me to an off the board question after this. So, like, how quick is Carl Bryant on his toes? We're about to find out. But the first question that came in is like, you know, like somebody's looking for some ideas on the best businesses for gross profit margins. I think that's a fantastic one. Um, that, like I, I I know one top of my head makeup uh, that that's a big one, uh, but th that sort of ties in probably with I'm sure a few that you've got. Like what what would you say are some of the best businesses for gross? Gr again, they specifically said gross profit margins. I'm not sure if there's something there, but why don't you dive into that? Nice. Um, 
and yeah, makeup for sure shoots. I mean, that's so look, uh, best business. I, I think the approach is lug, just think luxury goods, high end offerings, right? Like, think, uh, look, universities. I'm on this kick about just look, okay, think high end universities, right? Like, they make 90% plus, plus, plus margins, right? If you really think about it, it's unheard of in other industries over like a multi multiple decade period, right? Like brands like, say, MIT, Harvard, Berkeley University, they're not schools. They're really luxury brands, you know, and, and luxury brands are what? Rolex, Burberry, Louis Vuitton. Um, so, you know, Ferrari, uh, Disney, Apple would fall into that. Like, so luxury brands. So So back to the schools, like they reject... Think about like when somebody applies to get into MIT, they reject like 85% of the people that apply. Um, and then when they get accepted, they're su the successful applicant and, you know, and the parents, right? Like applaud like crazy and he gets promoted all over, you know, Facebook, that sort of thing. That scarcity and the public and acknowledgement of it, right, is the reason they maintain their mar margins, right? So like... As a business coach, are you spending time telling people how many people um, you did not allow in, how many people you do not work with, the types of people that you don't work with? Is that part of you know your story, your conflict? Um, could you tell? Could you craft a story where you talk about accepting a client that you really didn't think that you should for these reasons, right? And how it didn't go so well, and you learned a lesson, and now today you end up knocking back eight of ten people that asked you to coach them as a result. Right. Like. Like, is that something like a storytelling is that? And by the way, as I say that, is that something you feel comfortable with? The average coach doesn't. And why? Because they're not in the business like Hulk Hogan, Randy, Randy, Macho Man Savage comes to mind for some reason. But like Tom Cruise, uh, Taylor Swift, Madonna back in the day in the business of promoting them. Right. So look, but back to margins there. There's no business like education. Like, again, a 90 percent plus, 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 plus margins. Like Apple, by the way, so if you want a comparison, which might be fitting, um, like Apple's margins, I don't know what they are, but like 35%, right? Like Louis Vuitton, Rolex, and the other brands I'm, you know, talking about here, like you're going to see that they got like 50 to 60% margins. Um, and the reason, so then let's go like why, how, um, the reason is that they've maintained that scarcity and legit scarcity, by the way, like it's, it's limited by supply. You know that they can only like the school is only so big. The classrooms can be only so big. They only have so many professors, yeti, yeti, yeti. Um, so they legit have that scarcity and they promote the heck out of it. Right. And, and then by the way, look at like the testing the review of your life, like the references needed, the background checks, they're going to your social media and they're looking for, you know, racist remarks and sign of alcohol and drug abuse and excessive partying. Like that's what they're doing nowadays. Right. Um, so they maintain that margin. And this is the kick that I'm on, like supply versus demand. They limit supply and they just talk about it. It's, it's part of the story, part of the conflict of every, quality college and university that you know of right um, and the ones that don't have it that just you know the the community college doesn't have that same um approach right so and so the best margins like in education like coming back to business coaches right like so let's say an accountant how much does an accountant charge and i can tell you that like they're going to do your taxes. You go in once a year, bring in the shoe box. They keep you compliant, tell you how much you have to pay. And it's like $2,500 to hire an accountant for 12 months to, to, you know, keep you compliant with the government and tell you how much you have to pay. Right. Well, how much is consulting? And I would say that low end consulting is a grand a month, which is what? 12 grand a year. Proper consulting is like two grand a month. That's 24 grand a year plenty of consultants that you know work with us and have worked with us for many many years charge five grand a month which is 60 grand a year lots of them charge, you know on a you know naturally in the industry you're going to have less coaches that are charging 10 grand a month and getting it because it, it's one thing to charge it it's a whole nother thing to charge it consistently get it have low attrition high retention etc you know we get guys again and gals that you know experienced coaches that charge 10 grand a month 120 grand a year plus contingencies and whatnot 
um, and get it right. So, but let's let's go simple. Two grand a month is twenty four grand a year. Let's just go there and agree that that's on the the lower end of the pay scale, but quality for the chiropractor, the dentist, the landscape, and the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Right? Okay. Well, twenty four. What did I say a minute ago? The accountant charges how much? Twenty five hundred. And then how much is consulting? Twenty four grand. Well. If the accountant went into the business of consulting as opposed to accounting without looking at his books, does he have slight, like, and that's just margin, 2,400 and 24,000, that's, my friends, that's just margin, right? Like, which business, if you were an accountant and you were guiding an accountant, what would you put them in the business of? Right? Like, we have tons of accounts, like, we have, you know, 100 active accountants with us now, right? Uh, plus, plus. Um, what about... What about a magazine? What about a newspaper? What about an advertising medium, the online directory? How much does an ad cost on the online directory? And you're probably thinking 500, 1,000, maybe 2,500, five grand on the high side, right? Well, again, just go to my example. If they're charging, let's say 2,400 for the ad, and then how much is lower end you know, consulting that everybody could be happy with, and at the end of 12 months retain low attrition and high renewal rates? 24 grand a year, which could you give the ads away for free and then do your math and work out if three in 10 people said yes to 24 grand, what would you look like at the end of the, you know, what would you look like in the end? You know, it'd be way better idea. If I sold web, like if I sold websites for a living, like let's say I built websites, I would have no less than 10 ads running at any one time. Those ads would say COVID's done a number on all of us. I know that you're looking to have a better website, drive more traffic, convert more leads online. We are going to give this month five lucky applicants a free website. Right? But by the way, there'd be a little star there. And this is a five page basic website to be clear, right? Well, I would you know, build websites. I would hire a team in Indonesia or Croatia or you know, wherever. It's overseas, right? Um, India. And we would build websites, but what would we do? We'd be building the five-page website, and then I would say, okay, what do you want as a headline? What's your offer? Give me the education, like give me the copy for your website and how you're going to you know, convince people that you're the best landscaper, you're the best chiropractor, you're the best dentist, et cetera. And then, of course, without meeting them, I want you to rank from one to 10 their headline. And then I want you to rank from one to 10 their offer that doesn't exist. And then I want you to rank from one to 10 the level of their copy and the educational component and the persuasiveness of it and the storytelling. And then do they have conflict of any way, shape or form in there? And I think you're probably thinking one, two, three out of 10 right now. And I would agree with you. So what would I do? I take them from free website that my team in India would knock together. And then I would say, look, we've got this awesome software. We can find you 100 grand in 45 minutes without you spending a dollar on marketing or advertising. They'd say, holy smokes, maybe, maybe they wouldn't, right? But then we would move them in and then we'd sell them a $24,000 consulting program. Because like, do they need a new, on a scale of one to 10, do they really need a new website? Do they really need a new ad, right? Like what they really need is a business model that works, that understands the importance where I'm going here, the importance of margin. Like, do you have a $2,400 unit or do you have a $24,000 unit? And most certainly, do you have a $2,400 unit that leads to a $24,000 unit, which leads to a $50,000 unit, which leads to a $100,000 unit, et cetera? And the answer, I think you know, the, the chiropractor doesn't have a $25,000 program. And if he doesn't, he's gar I tell you one thing, he's guaranteed not to sell it. Hopefully you're picking up what I'm putting down where if I was building websites for a living, I would have ads and there'd probably be a hybrid because I didn't want everybody coming in for free. And some of those guys could be, uh, you know, bad clients, but I would also be asking for referrals. I would be doing some, you know, I'd have a little bit of a growth loop where those freebies would be bringing me other folks. Um, but without getting into that, I, I would build a high, I would build a luxury, let's call it a luxury um, product, right? With with really good, um, which, okay, which is education, which is what the university is selling, which again is, you know, not the most expensive thing in the world. One educator could stand up in front of 30 students or a hundred, depending upon the forum, but 30 students to 300 students and deliver the same talk with the same homework, with the same, 
you know, intellectual property and, and do pretty damn well, right? So, um, like, edu- bolting, where I'm trying to go there is the account. If I was an accountant, I would bolt on education. If I was own the local magazine, I would bolt on education. If I owned the online directory, I would bolt on education. If I, if I owned a promotional company selling pens and mugs and, and that sort of stuff. And by the way, these are, we have a lot of clients that have this, like we have a lot of um, clients where what they do is they sell advertising, but we help them bolt a consulting agency, a consulting division onto their thing, onto their magazine, newspaper, online directory, accounting, uh, account, you know, accounting business, right? And then they have this really high unit of sale called consulting with massive. See, one of the biggest advantages, and Road Dog knows this, and hopefully you understand this. And if you don't, please remember this of everything we talk about here today. Consulting rocks because of the margins, right? Like, it, it, well, how much does it cost you to take on a client and then and then charge them two grand a month, twenty four grand a year? How much does it cost to get that client? And how much does it cost to fulfill? And assuming you don't have coaches working for you, you're doing it all on your own. Like it's the margins are like 80%. They're amazing, right? You're, you're double Apple, which is a good thing. Um, so that, and that's ultimately that's education. So road dog, um, you know, it's like your client sells landscaping, help them become, you know, ed, and if I wanted to be a high end landscaper, how would I get there? There would be an educational component where I'd be showing people, you know, and I know nothing about landscaping, but, you know, I've got a big yard. I mean, I get under, like, you know, there's certain rocks that go in certain places and fences go in certain places and then the wind's coming through. So having a big fence here would protect the lawn furniture from blowing into the pool. You know what I mean? Like I would, I would, I would go into education to a large degree. Um, if, if I was, you know, cleaning your carpets, Joe Polish talked about this for years. Like he, he, his niche when Joe Polish got going, maybe you've heard of him, maybe you have it, but very high end guy in kind of our world. Um, you know, he, he carpet cleaning is how he cut his teeth and he would go into the house and it was like a full song and dance educating you on, look at your carpet. And then they would look at it and they're like, oh my gosh, look at this and look at that. And then by the way, this is causing allergies and this is causing sinus infections and this is causing this. And that's what you're putting in, you know, you're that three-year-old that just crawled by, like that's, that's what's happening to the three-year-old. Or maybe the the three year old would probably walk by, <laughs> not crawl by, but whatever, right? Um, but it's like ed, you know, it's education, education, education. If I was a chiropractor, you go in to see a chiropractor. Like, are they doing X rays? Are they educating you? And the answer is, they're trying to get you in and out as quickly as possible because they think that that's the way. You know, through qu- quantity over quality, that's how they that's how they make their money. Because why? Because they got a bad business model, right? Where it's like you know, turnover. If I'm a Cairo, I am going to educate you big time, right? Like big, big time. And I'm going to have some stories with conflict. In fact, I have a webinar that I did along, like a webinar that I did long, um, many, many times. And one of the examples I gave is Jim McMahon. Okay. Might know who that is. He played for the bears in 85, super like a, you know, Tom Brady esque, but like a bit of a bad boy, and you know, front of sports illustrated wearing his sunglasses and just a, you know, alpha males, right? Would just look to this guy and go, oh my God, I love Jim McMahon, right? He's a super cool guy. Anyways, so moved on. He's 60 years old or whatever he is now. Well, he's got uh, early onset um, dementia. Uh, and the reason is because, well, he just assumed that it was like other football players and he played a bit like a linebacker, right? So it was understandable that he was having some cognitive challenges. Well, he went to a chiropractor. They did an inter- They did a um, you know, a guy who knew what he was doing and took the time to not wheel him in and out, but to really look in depth, they worked out that his neck was so messed up that oxygen wasn't getting through his neck to his brain. And then what happened is he went to the, and you can see this, there's a show about, like he he did a, I don't know if there's a show, but there's like a, yeah, like a ESPN kind of show on Jim McMahon where he went through this. He goes to the chiropractor, they tweak his neck. He said it felt like a toilet flushing. And what happened, they tweaked his neck and all of a sudden he could breathe again. So the reason he has early onset dementia, which they can't reverse, but they did stop it, um, was because he wasn't getting enough oxygen to his damn brain because nobody actually went in to to work it, you know what I mean, to, to, to look this deep into it. So at the end of the day, so client that's, I'm a chiropractor and you're in my office. So here's my question for you. Do you ever feel tired when you feel like you shouldn't be tired? Or do you ever wake up in the morning after like a reasonably good night's sleep, like eight hours and just still feel tired and feel like you shouldn't? I mean, 
who's not going to say yes to that, right? Like everybody's going to say that, look, I feel tired every once in a while when I don't feel tired. Well, guess what? We should do a very comprehensive, um, you know, uh, x-rays, right? I'm going to do it on your head. I'm going to do it on your neck. I'm going to do it on your back. I'm going to do it on your shoulders. I'm going to do it on your lower back. It's going to cost a few bucks, but I'm really, really going to understand how air is flowing, how you're you know, how your backs, your lower backs working with the middle of your back, which is working with your shoulders, which is working with your neck, which is working with your head. And I want to make sure you're getting ma maximum airflow. And, you know, and by the way, Andy, everybody, I'd imagine that like, you know, you're getting up there, you're now, you know, you're 45, you're 50, you're 55, you're 60. Uh, I'd imagine like anti-aging and like, you know, this is something you're probably interested in, right? Like who's interested in looking older than what they are? Give me a break, right? Well, if you anti-aging, sure, you know, you got wrinkles and gray hair and no hair and whatever, like all those things, you know, make you look old. You know what really makes you look old is bad posture. You ever seen like an old, like if I could black everybody out, and we could just see some people walking down the street and with a million percent certainty, you are going to be able to you know, pick to go, that guy's 80, that guy's 60, and that guy's 20 by the way they walk down the damn street. Well, how do you keep good posture and how do you keep, um, you know, flexibility and all that stuff and to continue to walk like a young man instead of an old man or a young gal instead of an older gal? Posture. Well, so all of what did I just do? I put the chiropractor into anti aging. And why? Because remember, I'm trying to educate folks and I'm trying to put them in the game of luxury margins, right? So that. So road dog to your point, like the best businesses to go in, I did look, you started with makeup, home run, you know, cologne, these types of things, home runs. Again, they, you know, they, you know, they cost little to put out and you could put, if you do a good job of marketing them and you build a brand, you could charge, you know, not whatever you want for them, but, about, you know, you massive, massive margins. Right. But, but with your coaching clients, you can do the same thing, you know, and supply versus demand is also road dog. What I was trying to kind of, impress upon in there like the chiropractor say look man but i can like because i go so in depth and because we do it this way and because i'm i'm an anti-aging chiropractor and i'm really in the business of you know continue to make you look young and make sure you can touch your toes until you're 65 maybe 70 um, i can only look after so many clients so i can only accept so many clients in this platinum level program but if you want to be at 25 people in all of new york and all of la or all of cologne or all of our suburb um, that work one to one with me. This is what the this is what the model's going to look like, right? And I don't need to meet the chiropractor to know that he's not doing that, right? Um, the landscaper, something similar, like really high end landscaping. I just put your client. And is this going to happen today or tomorrow? Pro, if they're not already there, the answer is no. But this is where it takes some time, it takes some energy, it takes some focus, and it's it's going to take some education and some Jedi mind tricks to get them thinking that. Could I really be the local chiropractor that has a twenty-five thousand dollar program with a waiting list, um, and like knocking back more people than I'm accepting because I'm like the anti-aging guy? And if they're not highly educated, and they're not a good salesperson, they don't believe in themselves, and they don't don't go into the business of promoting themselves the way Hulk Hogan, Tom Cruise, Taylor Swift, Madonna, etc. did. Um, they're not going to get there. But that that's your job, right? So. Road Dog, what do you think? Like margins? I love the question. I love the foundation of it. And I hope that folks are really picking that up because that's you, you charge 24 grand a year. Your job is to your job description is as exciting as this. Put forty eight thousand dollars of profit in your client's jeans and they just doubled their money with you. You become Bitcoin and you're free for every day after that for the rest of the year. And the guy's going to be re-upping and the guy's going to be buying more from you. And the guy's going to be, you know, the guy or gal is going to say, when you say jump, they're going to say how, how high as opposed to why. And that's what you ultimately want to do. So what do you think, Shoots? Well, I think yeah. I don't understand Bitcoin because I thought if you pull back, isn't that how it works? You went, hey, oh, you dropped out. What, what about Bitcoin? What you I think? said with Bitcoin, I, maybe I don't understand it. I, I thought it was when you invest 24,000, you get 12 back. Isn't that how it works? <laughs> yeah, that's 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 how it works, shoots. That's hey, listen, works. real quick, and I'm gonna I'm gonna choose. I'm not even gonna ask you because I, I'm scared of rabbit holes because we're up against the clock here. But <laughs> okay. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna choose your your last question, um, and what you're gonna close us out with because you're talking about charging like high margins, right? We're talking coaching. Our audience here is coaches. We're talking eighty plus percent in terms of of margins that a coach can make. We're talking about charging multiple thousands of dollars per month. Okay. 
you and I both know one of the biggest challenges coaches will have is being able to, I guess, mentally overcome themselves in charging that fee. Yep. Like, yep. Can yep. you can you touch on that for just a second? Because it's like to me, it's that whole <clears throat> like where is that like? Because we can go into you know the deep stuff, but I'm like the yep. number one hurdle you're going to have is yourself. How can you? I don't know. Feel good. Yep. I I think I got it. Road dog. See what you think. Like first, like a road dog. Well worded, and that's again going to be the number one challenge you're going to have. Here it is. Here's the homework. Find a specific business you're going to help. And we've given this homework before, but we're going to give it again. And it's, I hope they'll pick it up, right? Pick up what we're putting down. Um, just say that you're going to help an XY. You're going to help a chiropractor. You're going to help a dentist, landscaper, butcher, baker, candlestick maker. Pick one. Just pick one. Any industry, right? But you got to pick one. And then write down pen and paper, I think works a lot better than an iPhone or an iPad. Write down 50 ways that you are going to help that business owner, that landscaper. And I'm telling you, the next day, you're just so excited to get on the phone with a landscaper. Like you call the accountant and say, put me on the phone with one. You call the chamber and you get on the phone with one. You cold call one because you just can't bloody wait that long. And because you you know, like you're staring at this list of 50 ways to improve um, their business. And you know what I mean? You, you just can't wait to get at them. But that, you know, because I've got a saying, if you introduce, introduce me to a business coach or a business consultant with a lack of leads, and I will introduce you a business coach or business consultant with a lack of competence, right? Like that's, it, it's just competence. So I think that, that that homework assignment right there has done incredible things um, for our coaches. And if you want an example of this, just Google my name um, with restaurant case study. And when I first started the one thing, uh, my daily email, I, I wrote a list of, I, I don't know how many, but I'm going to call it 50 ways to help a restaurant. And they're all like right there listed, ready to go. And that, but don't do me a favor. Don't pick restaurant because I gave it to you on a silver platter. Pick a different business owner or different business of different industry and write down 50 ways to help them and really dig deep. And you just, you're not going to be able to contain yourself with, you know, starting with one and, you know, charging your two grand a month, 24 grand a year and get started. So that's my answer shoots. What do you think? I think we should give away a one hour free coaching consultation call with you. If somebody puts together 50 things for candlestick makers, <laughs> I think that Jeez. would be amazing. Like you imagine you put that out there that talk about relevant content. Candlestick <laughs> making is it needs your help shoots. And you know what? And I just think we need to do this. I, I think that would be incredible. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, listen, you, you, you throw it out every time. If you're doing, if you're playing along, and I swear to God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up with a game, and it's gonna be <laughs> called uh, Business Coaching Carl Bryan Bingo Candlestick Maker will be a square, hundred percent. This is happening. Nice. All right, everybody. Nice. Thanks for tuning into another episode of Business Coaching Secrets with the main man, the candlestick making legend himself, King Carl. If you're not on the inside and getting access to the pre-show because you just can't get enough of us on the podcast, you got to get more, or you aren't getting Carl's daily emails, or you just want more information, maybe on the, the group coaching software, or anything else on how to become a better business coach, visit focused.com and subscribe today. And again, if you enjoyed the podcast, please share with a fellow coach or someone that you think might make a great coach. And of course, as always, uh, we'd appreciate if you'd rate the episode um, wherever you happen to get your streaming services. That would be greatly appreciated. And that is it for another Carl week, Carl Bryan, Built Profit Acceleration Software 2.0. To happiness. train business care, coaches everybody. how to find any small business owner more than $100,000 in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. This becomes a business coach's superpower. So as a business coach, you'll never again have to worry about working with business owners that can't afford your high-end coaching fees. Check us out at Focused.com.